Hi everybody. I wanted to do a vlog entry about a book that I just read and I wanted to share that with you because I thought it was just a terrific book. And so the book that I just read was called The Hidden Life of Otto Frank by Carol Ann Lee. And Otto Frank, who is right here, is the father of Anne Frank, who is right over here. And she is famous because you probably have heard about the diary of a young girl and uh, it was called Anne Frank, the, Anne Frank, the Diary of a Young Girl, and that's this is her who wrote that. She was only between the ages of 13 and 15 during World War II. Her family, she and her family were Germans, and they fled from Germany prior to the start of the war. This was like about 35 or so. Uh, and fled to Amsterdam because of the persecution that Jews were facing in Germany and her, she and her family were, Germ were uh, Germans but they were also Jewish and so they fled to Amsterdam and Holland and lived there um, um, uh, after that on, um, Frank went to school there she had an older sister her mother lived there also they had other family members that were spread throughout the rest of Europe that had to flee Germany and they fled to different places like England and, and Switzerland and the United States uh, prior to the war starting also. So none of the family ended up staying, remaining in Germany. When they were in Amsterdam, Otto Frank had a business. He had a, like a spice business that he had and um, he, that existed during part of the war, and, or throughout the war, I should say, and he ran that business uh, as long as Jews were allowed to have it. And then um, at some point when Nazi Germany had taken over uh, Holland had, in 1940, they started imposing laws that began restricting Jews and eventually he had to give up control of his business and he realized that things were going to be pretty bad for Jews and he was unable to leave Holland and by that point and so he and decided that this family was going to have to go into hiding and so he uh, arranged with people that he worked with in his company to hide um, to help him and they uh, hid in the back room which was called the annex of the business that he owned and so there was a kind of like an apartment that was there and so he uh, decided that his family was going to go in there and they had enough room so that they decided that his partner also and his family would go in there and they even had room later for adding one other person and um, so in total there were eight people that went into hiding that lived there for almost two years and they had Dutch, uh, the employees in the company that were helping by bringing in food on a regular basis and having, you know, bringing in the things that they needed. And they did that for almost two years to help them. And um, there was a an uh, informant who called the the Germans uh, the SS and told them, well not the SS but like the secret police that were there that uh, there were Jews that were living in this building and in 19 August of 44 the Germans uh, entered the building and immediately went back to the annex and opened it up and uh, they found the Franks as well as the other family and family families, I should say, and uh, took them into captivity. And the Franks ended up, and all of them ended up being in concentration camps uh, throughout different places. And um, at the end of the war, Otto Frank returns to Amsterdam but he is the only family member to do so. Everybody else who had been in hiding were, they all had been killed in the camps at different points in time. Um, not killed in the selections, but rather through just dying of starvation and disease and uh, some of them just shortly before the war even ended. In fact, one of them was on one of the, of the day that uh, one of the camps was actually liberated by the, the Allied troops that he had died. 
So it was uh, at the time when Otto Frank returned to Amsterdam, he didn't know at first if what had happened to his family, and it wasn't until many, many months later that he learns, I think in really it was almost over a year before he learned the fate of all of his um, family members and the other people that he uh, was in captivity with. He would learned about his wife, that she had died pretty early after his return, but the rest of them he didn't know, and he particularly held out hope for uh, his daughters, Anne and Margot, but he found out, um, it was over a year later, that they had both died um, from disease. I think they had typhus. So it was um, really difficult for him to be able to handle that, and um, one of the the people who had helped them in hiding, whose name was Meep Geese, she had found these papers um, in the annex after the the Nazis had come in and had taken everything, and uh, or had not taken everything, but had taken all the occupants there that were in hiding, and they typically would bring in these moving trucks to take out all the furniture and everything. And so she, before the moving trucks came in, uh, she went in very quickly and grabbed up all the papers. She didn't really know what they were. She just grabbed them and took them. And it turned out that the papers were the diary that Anne Frank had been writing over a course of about two years. And um, she Meep kept them all in hiding uh, throughout the war and then after the war was over she didn't give them to Otto Frank right away because she knew that he was very emotional about what had happened to his family and he was uncertain about that and she just just didn't feel it was the right time to give him something like that and um, she finally gave it to him when she finally determined that okay he was ready to handle this emotionally and uh, at first he didn't read the diary but he started to later, and he was just amazed by what he found because the diary was so poignant and it was so powerful, and he began writing excerpts of it and writing them to various people, uh, his family members and so forth, and telling them about Anne and the terrific uh, writing that she had done. And he learned about her things that he, he never knew. He didn't know that she was such a deep and caring person and so observant about things in the world and so he was really very impressed with that and so he wanted to uh, after time begin to look trying to publish this at different places for example in Germany and and uh, other countries and he began working on a translation uh, helping hiring people to work on the translation and so it talked a lot about the translation and how that was going to take place and how difficult a process that was because it just isn't easy to find people who could write in the right voice of a young girl of that age and and to be able to capture the the the, the, the this era of that time period and so it was really uh, a really interesting story about the process of what he had to go through and, and the tribulations that he had to go through because even after coming up with this diary a lot of people didn't like what he had to say in some cases they were didn't uh, they doubted the authenticity of the diaries and so he had to fight through that throughout much of the rest of his life and he lived to be uh, a man into his 90s and so you know it was something that was very very challenging for him terrific book so i really would recommend this to anybody if you are interested again the hidden life of otto frank by carol ann lee and great book